For those that have taken any form of math class, hopefully all of you, you are most familiar with the weird hypotheticals concocted to get you to be slightly more interested in solving a math problem. If John has 6 oranges and Jeremy has 12 oranges, but gives 2 to John, how many oranges does John have? Or some similar nonsense. I shouldn't say they are complete nonsense, as they do show you how math may work in real life, but often these math problems really have no bearing on real life or the careers many students intend to go into. Late February 2022, Professor of Physics Scott Lee of the Department of Physics and Astronomy of the University of Toledo published a paper in which he lays out an algebra-based physics problem involving a dinosaur and a famous racer that he thinks may help provide engagement in math-based physics learning. Most physics courses begin with teaching the tools necessary to understand one-dimensional kinematics. One-dimensional kinematics being the analysis of the positions and motions of objects as a function of time, disregarding the cause of the motion. There's the one-dimensional part. So you basically just try to figure out how fast something is moving if given some data points. This is usually restricted to the case of constant acceleration when first taught. Dilophosaurus is an early theropod dinosaur from the early Jurassic period of what is now Arizona. It was first found in the 1940s and has a long taxonomic history as it was embroiled in the famous genus Megalosaurus for a while until better fossils were found of the animal in the 50s through the 70s. Footprints from the same time and place as Dilophosaurus fossils have been attributed to Dilophosaurus or some other very close relative. The remains of Dilophosaurus were redescribed in 2020 in a comprehensive study by Adam Marsh and Timothy Rowe. This found that the anatomy of the animal was a tad different than had been reconstructed over the last 80 or so years. The skull was much more heavily built, with a less obvious kink in the snout. The double crests were larger and rounder, arching up over the eye sockets to connect to the lacrimal crests, these guys here. The upper margin of the crest was spongy and full of holes, probably both naturally and from the fossilization process and very similar to the bony base of the casks of hornbills and cassowaries. The animal was the first large theropod dinosaur in the fossil record and also the largest known from 193 million years ago at a length of 6 meters, 20 feet or more. It also obviously appeared as a skinny, stunted, tyrannosaur-skulled, bunny-handed, elephant-skinned, lizard-frilled version of itself in the 1993 classic movie about dinosaurs. Um, uh, what's that one called again? Uh, I don't know. Some flop or something. Recent advances in producing musculoskeletal models of backboned animals have helped to find the top running velocities of many dinosaurs, like Tyrannosaurus, Coelophysis, and more relevantly, Dilophosaurus. More specifically, a 2007 study by William Sellers and Phil Manning took to creating a digital musculoskeletal model to run the bones and muscles of various dinosaurs through various paces to see how fast their bones and muscles were capable of propelling them. Previous studies on dinosaur speeds had used indirect methods like anatomical comparisons, bone scaling, bone strength, safety factors, and ground reaction force analyses. This 2007 study used three living animals, humans, ostriches, and emus, plus five extinct bipeds, Compsognathus, Velociraptor, Dilophosaurus, Allosaurus, and Tyrannosaurus. Some of the most completely known theropod dinosaurs, and coincidentally, most which have appeared in a certain movie franchise that I just for some reason cannot for the life of me remember the name of. Mr. Physics Man Scott Lee used the model provided by Sellers and Manning in their 2007 study of Dilophosaurus to construct his physics problem hypothetical. This speed for Dilophosaurus was found to be about 10.5 meters per second which is about the same average velocity of world-famous Jamaican sprinter Usain Bolt when he set the world record of 9.58 seconds in the 100-meter sprint in 2009. According to Lee, starting from rest, a runner's acceleration to maximum running velocity is described by the following equation. Velocity of time equals max velocity multiplied by 1 subtracted from the constant e to the power of negative k or the fitting parameter related to the internal resistance multiplied by time. 
This is assuming the application of a constant propulsive force and an internal resistance, which limits the maximum running velocity. According to Lee, a fit of this equation to the velocity data of Usain Bolt results in max velocity equals 12.08 meters per second plus or minus 0.04 and k equals 0.821 seconds plus or minus 0.009. We already have the max velocity for Dilophosaurus as 10.5 meters per second. To determine k for living animals, this equation is used. k equals c times m to the negative 0.15, with m being the mass of the animal. The measured values of k for the lion, wildebeest, zebra, Thompson's gazelle, and Usain Bolt are used to evaluate the parameter c, which is then used to determine k for Dilophosaurus with k being k equals 0 0.400 plus or minus 0.223 s to the negative 1. Here is a figure produced by Lee which shows a comparison of running velocity as a function of time for Bolt and Dilophosaurus. As Lee states, the solid line in figure 1 is a fit of equation 1 to the running data of Usain Bolt. Though the students in the first semester of our introductory algebra-based physics course don't have the necessary background to perform such a fit themselves, they appreciate the quality of the fit to the experimental data for Usain Bolt. For this one-dimensional case, the acceleration is the derivative of the velocity with respect to time. That would be this equation here, a of t equals dv over dt multiplied by max velocity k and e to the negative k multiplied by t. The maximum acceleration happens at the beginning of movement, time equals zero, and is given by this equation, max acceleration equals max velocity times k. As the paper continues, for this race, Usain's maximum acceleration in the horizontal direction was a max equals 9.91 plus or minus 0.11 meters per second squared, approximately the same as the acceleration due to gravity. Since I despise math in all instances except for when it is absolutely necessary, which is most of the time unfortunately, I will be quoting a lot from Lee's paper. I don't have the mental capacity to simplify and summarize math concepts, but you know, I'll do my best when the opportunity arises. So, Lee states that there are sound pedagogical reasons for the emphasis on constant acceleration found in the traditional treatment. Pedagogy being the method or practice of teaching, or how someone teaches another. In other words, the emphasis on using constant acceleration in math problems for people learning physics or calculus has roots in how to get the fundamentals of this type of math across to the student. Lee goes on, The kinetic equations derived for constant acceleration permit the solution of a variety of problems as well as leading to parabolic motion for projectile motion. That's how you get the curve, or parabola, in the graph of the equation for the projectiles, Bolt and Dilo. Despite how constant acceleration in the vacuum of a math problem is good for teaching fundamentals, real-world acceleration doesn't always work that way. It's usually variable. Lee states that this Dilophosaurus versus Usain Bolt math activity provides the student the knowledge needed to handle such variable world situations. Lee continues, the activity starts with velocity as a function of time of both Usain Bolt and Dilophosaurus. Using a spreadsheet for the calculations, the displacement is determined by calculating the area under the velocity versus time curve, while the acceleration is determined by calculating differences. These calculations have the pedagogical benefit of reinforcing the concepts of integration and differentiation. A model of Dilophosaurus weatherili, shown in figure 2, is brought to the classroom and passed around by the students. The masses of Dilophosaurus and Usain Bolt are 486 kilograms, respectively. After reminding the students about the definition of average velocity, the class is asked to write their opinion of who would win a 100-meter race between Usain Bolt and Dilophosaurus, and to provide their logic used to reach their conclusion, Lee wrote. I mean, a life-size skull cast of a Dilophosaurus might have been better than a monsterized version of the animal from Papo, but who would be so cool as to have a Dilo skull on hand? I mean, I will have one on my desk when I become a professor, but who could really be as cool as me? As the activity continues, the students are asked to write their complete opinion in order to provide the logic supporting their opinion. The students are then asked to share their thoughts with their neighbor before a class-wide discussion is held. 
Scott Lee is a physics professor at a college, but coming from my own experience, this sort of activity would make me want to plunge daggers into my eyes. Literally no offense meant to Lee. Despite the potential cringe of having to talk to other people you may or may not hate, a dinosaur math problem is definitely more intriguing than oranges being moved by gravity, or some weird synchrotron hypothetical. This Dilo v Bolt question is designed to emphasize the difference between average and instantaneous velocities. Most students, while writing their logic for their prediction, arrive at the correct logic. The fact that the average velocity of Usain Bolt over the 100-meter race matches the maximum velocity of Dilophosaurus means that Usain Bolt will win the race. This activity is part of Lee's conclusion of the study of one-dimensional kinematics in order to connect the numerical methods used in this activity with earlier work for constant acceleration, Lee first considered a particle starting from rest and accelerating at a constant rate to a final velocity. As the study states, typically, the acceleration is 2 meters per second square, and the final velocity is 10 meters per second. Since we are starting with velocity data, we emphasize that the displacement is given by the area under the V versus T curve, and that the acceleration is the slope of the tangent to the velocity curve. Using a spreadsheet program, such as Microsoft Excel, the students calculate the velocity every 0.02 seconds for 5 seconds. The students calculate the area in each time interval, 0.02 seconds, by multiplying the time interval by the average velocity during that interval. The total displacement is then determined by summing all of these individual displacements. Since the geometric shape is a right triangle, they also calculate the area using the formula of the area of a right triangle. A comparison between these two results should yield excellent agreement, with no error. The students also determine the acceleration by calculating the slope of the velocity versus time curve for every time interval. In agreement with the constant acceleration of this example, the students obtain the same value, 2 meters per second squared in this case, for each time interval. Anyway, this results in these figures, figure 4, showing the slope of acceleration for Bolt and the Dilophosaurus over time. Note that Usain actually had a negative acceleration during the very end of the race. Lee speculates this may be Usain slowing down near the end, having figured he'd already won the race, but it could just as well be a product of fatigue. Dilophosaurus shows an initial acceleration of 4.1 meters per second squared, essentially the same as the 4.2 meters per second squared calculated by using equation 2 with Vmax equals 10.5 meters per second and K equals 0.4 S to the negative 1. Comparison of the two parts of figure 4 show why Usain Bolt would win such a race. He has a greater acceleration while accelerating to his higher max velocity than Dilophosaurus. So, with all the math done, Usain wins the race over Dilophosaurus. Usain wins by only 2 seconds. That's not a lot, and I suspect a really determined, hungry adult Dilophosaurus could probably keep going past that race and eat poor Bolt if it wanted to. Now that we're at the finish line, is this even accurate? The speed of Dilophosaurus, 10.5 meters per second, was taken from Sellers and Manning's 2007 paper. But a lot of stuff on dinosaur speeds has come out since then. What does the new science say? The book, Dinosaur Facts and Figures, The Theropods and Other Dinosaur Forms, by Eofauna, a team of paleoartists and paleontologists, listed the top speed of the Lophosaurus as 12.7 meters per second. This was done by using a more up-to-date equation. This one, to be exact, velocity equals the multiplication of limb length by cadence by stride length against space-time variable. You get some of those with this chart, but it equates to Dilophosaurus running up to 12.7 meters per second, catching up to Usain and eating him without much effort. Oh well, it's still a cool math problem that would probably get students more involved. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, hit the bell icon for updates, like this video, and drop a comment in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my elephant tier patrons, Ray, Isaiah Garza, Dinosaur, Christoph Hubbinger, Biotiverse, and Arda Bayer. And another thanks to my Tyrannosaurus tier patrons, The Dogman, Iron Bladesman, Danny Van Heck, and Dana Manchester.